let's do it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to episode 35 of Bug of the Week, brought to you by Little Dudes Insight Academy. My name's Brayden, and we're going to talk about these three basal non-insect hexapods. So in case you missed last week, we talked about what makes an arthropod an arthropod, how they're related to other animals, and some of the arthropods that make it special. And we kind of left it open-ended with the hexapods. So for the rest of the series, we're going to talk about the 33 hexapod orders. And the first three are actually non-insect hexapods, and then the remaining are all insect orders. So basically, we talked about this a little bit last episode, but in case you missed it, there are these three basal hexapod orders that aren't quite insects, but they still have six legs. So the first main uh, important part about these non-insect hexapods is that they are entognathous, meaning uh, they have mouth parts that are sort of retracted into their head. So they're not outside of the head like the insect mouth parts are. Number two is these uh, hexapods exhibit a metabolist development, meaning they don't go through any metamorphosis. They simply molt through their life cycle, eventually reaching sexual maturity in their adult molt. So they don't go through a complex metamorphosis like all of the other insects do. All of the other insects are either hemimetabolous or holometabolous, which basically means they are larvae like beetles and butterflies are and then become adults, or they are like praying mantises where they molt through a series of nymphal stages and then become adults. The third reason that these guys are not considered insects is that none of them are winged and none of their ancestors ever had wings. So wings are actually a really unique thing within the class Insecta, and they're very special to insects, uh, and so these non-insect hexapods do not have wings, thus they are not insects. So yes, they are hexapods, they do have six legs like insects do, but because of those mouth parts, their development, and the lack of wings, they are not insects. So for this first week before we get into all of the insect orders, I wanted to do one week where we just talk about these three non-insect hexapods, because I think they're really cool and still really important and really little known. Lots of people don't know that they exist, and I think they're really cool. So the group of these three non-insect hexapods can also be called entognatha, again, because of those mouth parts, that's the word we use as this group. So the three members of this group include Protura, Columbula, and Diplura. And we're going to talk a little bit about each of those, how they're different, how they're similar, and some of their life history. So first off with this first one, Protura, also known as the cone heads. These little insects are very, very small, ranging from 0.2 to 2 millimeters in length. Cone heads are unpigmented, so they're often a yellow or a clear, translucent, or white color. And they're mostly soil dwelling and leaf litter dwelling. So they'll live in either soil or leaf litter. They kind of just crawl around and do their thing and they are little guys. <laughs> so I wouldn't say that this is something that makes these groups not insects. But you'll notice that cone heads do not have antennae. So all insects have some form of antennal structures that they use to sense the surroundings. Uh, they have lots of sensory inputs and sensory organs in their antennae, which we'll talk about more when we get to the insects. But cone heads completely lack antennae. Another thing is they don't usually have eyes. You'll see this happen with a lot of creatures that live in the dark or at night or uh, in the dirt where they actually lose their eyes because eyes take a lot of energy and work to make. And so if you don't need the eyes because they don't work anyway in the dark, it's actually better to just lose them. So that's what's happened in cone heads and many other non-insects, insects alike. Many animals lose their eyes because they don't need them and they're expensive to make. So what do they use to sense their surroundings then? Because these little creatures live in very dark areas down in the soil. They need to sense their surroundings somehow. The main way that Proturans get around this is if you look at their front legs, 
their front legs are uh, quite long and very hairy and spiky. So all those hairs are called seedy, and these are sensory hairs, uh, which are very common in insects and arthropods alike, but seedy are very uh, important for sensory capabilities, specifically manual and touch sensory. And so these protrins basically use these front legs as a pseudo antennae. They sort of use them like an insect would use their antennae. So basically, cone heads walk around with their arms up with their arms first to sense the world around them manually. So yeah, they're pretty cool. If you ever see them, they kind of walk in kind of a funny way because they're, they've always got these arms in front of them like antennae, but they are indeed their legs. And if you're wondering how you would ever find them, um, again, they're very, very small. So a very common way that entomologists find them is through something called a burlesi funnel. So a burlesi funnel would be a way that you could collect any of the three non-insect hexapods we're talking about today. It's a really efficient and good way to collect soil-dwelling animals. Mites, these three hexapods that we're talking about, small spiders, nematodes, worms, isopods, all of those soil-dwelling creatures can be collected with a burlesi funnel. So a burlesi funnel is basically like you take a big scoop of dirt, right? You take soil, you collect soil uh, with a trowel or a shovel or whatever, and you put it in this funnel contraption and you can actually kind of make these at home and basically what it is to simplify it you would put your dirt in the funnel and then you'd put a a a, a light above your sample ideally a light that puts off some kind of heat so uh you know us in the department we use a a heat bulb um to produce heat and what do soil dwelling creatures in general not really like it's dry heat and so what they do is they move down the funnel, and then you put a bowl or a glass or a vial of ethanol under the funnel. They climb down, avoiding the heat, and they fall right into the ethanol, and they die instantly. And then it's pretty easy because that's actually the way you would collect and preserve most of the soft-bodied soil-dwelling creatures is in ethanol. So uh, you could just put those right into a vial of ethanol and you'd be good to go. But if you're not actually trying to collect, you could also see these guys just in your garden under leaf litter. Again, they're very small, but they're quite noticeable. And one of their distinguishing features is those big front legs, as well as their heads uh, without eyes. And they're kind of cone-shaped, hence the cone head name. Wasn't there like a weird like 80s TV show called Cone Heads? Cursed always freaked me out as a kid. I wonder if the creators like knew about Pratura. Well, anyway, back to the the real (laughs) cone heads. But yeah, you can tell they look a little different than really any other little crunchy critter. And it's because they have that cone-shaped head with no eyes. So yeah, if you find them, they will be uh, pretty noticeable. So as for their life history, Proturans mostly live in the soil, like I mentioned, and the leaf litter. They mostly feed on small fungi and dead plant matter, you know, decaying plant matter, uh, nothing crazy. And there are about... A little over 500 species currently described. So yeah, you can see here on this very detailed microscope photo, I believe this is from a scanning electron microscope, but that is actually its head. You know, it doesn't really have eyes. It's got that little like mouth on the bottom, but again, the mouth parts are inside, but you can really see all the CD. Uh, This is what the CD look like. All right, so next up, my personal favorite, the Columbula. I love them. (laughs) But yeah, Columbula is the next one, also known as springtails. And uh, springtails are really cool, really charismatic, but they're not insects, like I mentioned. So Columbula are really fun. I really like them because of their eyes. You can see their eyes, and they look very charismatic. I especially like these round ones. I mean, look just how goofy they look. They're so cute. But yeah, uh, columbula come in all shapes and sizes. We've got these these round ones. We've got these longer ones, more isopod-looking ones, more mealybug-looking ones. They have a lot of diversity. Columbula is a much larger group than uh, Protura, with over 8,200 described species so far. Springtails are really fun. They do have antennae, which is pretty cool cool and they're quite similar to the antennae on insects and other arthropods so they use them for sensory capabilities and the springtails have a fairly similar life history to the proturans Uh, they're a little larger than the proturans so these guys typically range from one to five millimeters uh, so they can be a lot larger 
than the even the largest of the proturans, but they sort of fill a similar niche to the proturans. They live in leaf litter and in uh, soil, and they feed on decaying fungus, decaying plant matter, mold. So these guys are actually used in a lot of terrariums. So if you've ever kept live plants or things in a terrarium, a lot of people put springtails in the terrarium to help clean up and eat any mold that grows or anything like that. So a lot of you might have heard of springtails from that world. Yeah, so the reason springtails are called springtails is because of this little appendage coming off the end of their bodies. It's called a furcula, and it allows them to spring and, you know, jump into the air to evade predators or if they get scared or if they need to clear a gap or disperse in some way, they hit this furcula on the ground, springing their bodies up. They're really cool, and that's part of why they're so charismatic is because of this uh, jumping behavior. So these are soil dwelling, so the same way you could collect them would be with the Protura, with a Berlesi funnel, uh, but they're also a lot just a lot easier to find because they're a lot larger. They're very common. There's lots of species, over 8,000 species described so far. They're also a lot larger, a lot more noticeable, so you don't really have to collect them with a Berlesi funnel. You can collect them just with your bare hands. And I think they're really cute. They're they're really fun, and um, they do lots of good things for uh, decomposition and the soil life. So with that, Columbula, my beloved, I'll have to move on to the next one, which is Diplura. These guys are also known as two-pronged bristle tails or two tails, but most people really just call them Diplurans. There are currently about 800 species of Diplura that we've described so far. So just like the other two in this group, a lot of them are very small, unpigmented, sort of translucent, clear, whitish color and they're also soil dwelling just like the other two and they're also <laughs> very small right so they're about two to five millimeters in length but what gets interesting about these guys is uh, they have these appendages coming off the end of their abdomens called circe so circe is something we will talk about a lot more when we get to the insects because lots of insects especially the more ancestral insects have these structures called circe, which are basically antennae, but coming out the abdomen, out the end of the abdomen. So like antennae of the butt, basically. So you'll notice diplurans have these segmented beaded antennae on their heads, but they also have another set coming off of their abdomen called circe. Circe have a number of uses even within diplura. So the first one are these long thread-like circe, which are pretty common in some insects, and they have a similar use as the antennae do. So they're used for uh, sensory and airborne vibrations. So a good example of a uh, use of circe would be cockroaches, right? Why is it so hard to swat a cockroach or stomp on a cockroach? Is because they notice the airborne vibrations very, very quickly because of their circe, which have a lot of very sensitive CD on them. So remember we talked about CD with the proturans, circe on insects and the hexapods have lots and lots of CD for picking up airborne vibrations. They're good for picking up vibrations, but with all things, Circe have a drawback, and that is that Circe are another thing to grab. They're another thing for predators to yoink, right? So it makes them more prone to predation, but it has that sensory benefit. Some diplurans have another form of these circe, and they're more pincher-like, more like an earwig. These diplurans uh, have these pincher-like circe, which still have CD on them. These more pincher-like circe are thought to be used for attraction of mates. Um, something about them is attractive to them, so all of the diplurans have some form of circe, uh, which is pretty cool. They either have long thread-like circe or the segmented pincher like Circe. So that's a pretty cool thing. So you might be thinking, well, how do you tell Diplura apart from Protura? Because they're both small, soil-dwelling, unpigmented little hexapods. Well, I would use two main things. Number one is antennae. Diplura's have antennae, Proturans do not. And Circe. Diplura have Circe and Proturans do not. So one thing that's kind of fun about the Diplurans is that uh, many of them do feed on similar things as Columbula and Protura, decaying plant matter, things like that. 
but there are some that are carnivores, right? They're they're predators. So they some of them actually hunt columbola and protura and other little soil dwelling creatures, which is pretty cool to think about. So they'll feed on you know mites and other things of that sort. All right, y'all. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning about these non insect hexapods, but I'm excited for next week because we're going to get into the insects, which is what I enjoy learning about. And we'll see some patterns, some similarities, differences between all those different orders. But I hope you enjoyed learning about these little hexapods that a lot of people don't know about. My favorite are the Columbula. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment uh, if you learned anything new this week about these pods that I think are very overlooked. But with that, I will see you all next week. But until then, keep on bugging. See ya.